Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at how you can potentially save thousands of pounds by remortgaging. I'm Kozan from Financial Man, it's helping you be better with your money. So remortgaging is the process of switching to get another mortgage to replace your existing mortgage that you have now. But why on earth would you do that? And the answer to that is simple. More often than not, it can help you save lots of money by doing so. In most circumstances, when getting a mortgage, one very common route is to obtain a fixed rate mortgage, which means that the interest rate that you get when you sign on is fixed for a specific period. And this is usually between two to five years. Now, remortgaging is worth considering once your fixed rate term is coming to a close. If you don't remortgage and your fixed term is up, you'll be moved onto the bank's standard variable rate, which is not fixed, so it can be changed at any time with no reason needed. And you need to be careful as the standard rate variable can be a lot higher. If we look at this graph here, which highlights the average five year fixed term rate versus a standard variable rate between the years 1995 to 2015, you can see that there's only a few points in recent history where the variable rate is lower than the average fixed term rate. The most notable period where the variable rate was lower was during the period of 2008 to 2010 when interest rates were historically slashed due to the financial crash and this would have negatively impacted those on fixed rate deals as they were locked in at a much higher rate than those on variable rate deals which would have most likely have seen their rates being slashed in accordance with the interest rate. To give you an example and it's actually the reason why I have made this video and that is because I have actually gone through the remortgaging process myself just recently. My first mortgage was with Nationwide and they offered a fixed rate of 3.24% for two years. Once the two years are up, I will then be moved on to the standard mortgage rate, which I managed to take out of my contract. And at the time of getting my mortgage, that standard rate was at 3.59%. But now if I go on their website two years later, it's at a whopping 4.74% with the standard rate having no upper limit or cap. And as mortgages are typically in the hundreds of thousands, the higher the rate you get could result you in paying thousands of pounds more in interest. For example, if we look at a mortgage calculator and we use my initial rate of 3.24%, we would pay just over 1,700 pounds per month. And this over the course of 25 years would result in just over 516,000 pounds. Changing this rate to 4.74%, so the SMR rate, that would be over 2,000 pounds per month and this would cost us over 604,000 pounds over the 25 year period. That's a difference of almost 89,000 pounds and that only happened with a 1% increase in interest rate and therefore just demonstrating how you can pay thousands of pounds more by even just a little increment in the rate. So how do you remortgage? To find a new mortgage, it is pretty much the same as when you first got one. You have the option to go through a broker or you can scour the market yourself by going to lenders directly or by using online comparison tools. I would suggest actually doing a bit of everything as some deals aren't available via brokers and some aren't available on comparison tools. So it's always good to do a bit of your own investigation where you can to ensure that you've explored all potential options. You will need to hire a solicitor to do all the legal work, but some lenders, as with our one, offered solicitors as part of the remortgaging process, which made our lives a lot easier. Other potential fees to consider are valuation fees. However, most remortgaging processes do this for free, but some can come at a cost. So that is the process, which I'm sure you'll agree is pretty straightforward as you've gone through it already. But here are two tips that I have learned, which will be really helpful to anyone going through or soon to be going through this process. The first one is get in early. Make sure you start looking at deals as early as possible, six months before your term ends to be precise. To give you an example, my current two year fixed term deal with Nationwide comes to a close this November, but it was only last week that they told me that my term was coming to an actual close and these were the steps that I could take. So last week, that's what, three months before my contract ends. But did you know you can lock it up up to six months before without being subject to any early exit fees? So what we did instead was back in April this year, we reached out to our broker to help look for deals and he found one with our new lender at a five year fixed rate at 2.69% and we locked this deal in when May came round. Obviously, this was all still subject to valuations, solicitors, etc., etc. But the benefit of having locked this in early, especially when rates are seemingly on the increase, is that A, that you don't have to worry about the increasing base rate and its effect on mortgage products, 
as you've already locked in your deal and this has to be honored when you eventually switch providers. And B, even if a better deal does come along, you can actually pull out of the deal at any point along the way whilst not occurring any fees. Although do check the terms and conditions for your specific agreement. Even if your lender happens to now offer a better rate than the one you've agreed to earlier, simply getting in contact with them should be enough for them to change the rate in your contract to the newest rate that they're offering to others. So by getting your new deal fixed as early as possible, you're giving yourself time to find the best deal possible. And if a better deal does come along, you can pull out any time too. Another side note is that some mortgages do have upfront fees associated with them. So try and avoid paying these until the very last minute. That way, if you do decide to withdraw your application, you don't have to wait for a refund. So that is tip number one, get in early. Tip number two is more applicable if you've done some major renovation works to your property since you've obtained your current mortgage. And this has all got to do with the valuation process. So as part of the remortgaging process, the lender will want to re-evaluate your property. If you can, especially if you have carried out major home improvements, try and get your new lender to carry out this valuation in person. What most lenders try to do nowadays is do a desktop valuation where they use information online to assess how much your property is worth, which might work for some. However, any home improvements you've done aren't obviously gonna show up on the web. So you may risk having your property undervalued without having an in-person valuation done. Now this actually happened to us. So when we actually bought this property, we carried out a full top to bottom renovation. So it was quite a big project. So when we did get our valuation, which was a desktop valuation, we were very disappointed. We actually ended up appealing the decision and we thankfully won. And the lender later agreed to do an in-person valuation. The valuation came back with a 10% increase compared to the desktop valuation. So definitely worth getting an in-person valuation if you can. So hopefully the remortgaging process is now clear. Let's quickly weigh up the pros and cons to help you decide if it's right for you. Starting with the pros it can help you reduce your monthly mortgage payments. If you manage to secure a lower rate and with all else being equal, this can reduce your monthly mortgage payments with any savings you make being put into overpayments if you wanted to. The second pro is if house prices increases and you get a lower loan to value. So the ratio between how much your mortgage is against the property value is known as the loan to value ratio. For example, if you put down a 10% deposit, your LTV will be 90%. The lower the LTV, the better access to cheaper rates you can get. Now, by paying off your mortgage, you will slowly acquire more ownership of your home, which will mean your LTV ratio when it comes to remortgaging should be less. It could be 85%, for example. On top of this, if your house price has also increased in value, this will further reduce your LTV to potentially let you qualify for better mortgage deals. Another benefit is that you'll have better control of your finances. Having a fixed rate term will give you peace of mind as you'll know how much you'll have to pay during that term rather than having to worry about fluctuating monthly mortgage payments that you would normally get on a variable rate mortgage. And you are protected by any increases in the base rate. We've all seen on the news that the Bank of England have increased the base rate to the highest levels for over a decade to 1.75% to curb the current inflation crisis. If you are in a fixed rate mortgage, you will not be affected by potential fluctuations in mortgage rates. Whereas if you are on a variable tracker and discounted mortgage, you can be. So if you anticipate the base rates will continue to increase, which many are predicting to be true, then fixing a deal early may prove to be even more beneficial. Now moving on to the cons. First one being is background checks. Going through the remortgaging process will mean you will be subject to background and credit checks. So if you happen to have acquired more debt or lost your job or experienced any financial instability during this time of remortgaging, then going through this process may not be beneficial as any failing credit checks does go on your record. The second con is if there is a fall in the house value. So this kind of goes back to my earlier positive point. So if the property increases in value, that means your LTV goes down, which potentially gives you access to better mortgages. The opposite is also true. A decrease in your house value, perhaps we're in the midst of a housing crash, will reduce the amount of equity you own and therefore increasing your LTV at the point of remortgaging, which can result in you having to borrow more money or just have access to poorer mortgage packages, therefore costing you more money overall. 
And another con is if there is a fall in the base rate. So again, this goes back to my earlier positive point. If you anticipate base rates to go up, then it is good to be on a fixed home mortgage. But on the other side of the coin, if they fall, then being on a non-fixed term mortgage will likely to be more beneficial. And the last con is cost. So remortgaging is only worth doing if you're approaching the end of your fixed rate term. Any earlier than this, then you may be charged with a penalty fee for leaving your current contract early. Only in small circumstances will this prove to be beneficial as these penalty fees are very hefty. But if you are keen to do it anyway, be sure to factor in the cost of leaving early this is how much you'll save by switching early, which will allow you to determine if it's worth actually just to wait out until the end of your term. And on a second note on costs, sometimes mortgages have fees associated to them. Always factor these in your total repayment plan. Let's look at this example from money to the masses. Although lender A has a cheaper interest rate and a monthly cost than lender B, their fees are 10 times larger, which would result you paying more in the long run. So be sure to factor all fees when comparing mortgages. Of course, that is it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below if you do have any questions. And if you do have any more tips when it comes to remortgaging, I'd love to hear from you.